at 7am, which also probably isn't even that early to some people. It's early to me, I'm pretty sure it's early to Lachlan. I have to go and do a, an exam today, so I need to leave early. In case for you, those that didn't know, me and Lachlan have, we live about an hour away from each other. So, he has to, because we're training at my place, he has to get the train down. So, I'm sure we're both a bit tired right now. But we'll perk up. We'll lock and load. And here he is. Walk one. <laughs> so there it is. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Are you know, secret. Look at this hair. That caffeine, bro. <laughs> <laughs> First ever Webster. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, we're starting the workout. It's an early morning session as I already told you. Today, maybe I can help you with a bit of time saving tips. I've got an hour and a half to do this workout. I usually need two hours to three hours. I've got handstand lower to planche, handstand push up. They're two of the exercises. One, two, three, four. I've got seven exercises to do. What I'm going to do as a time saver tip is superset those together. This cuts the time of your exercises because you're getting it done all at once and you're still exercising the same muscles. I dare say it could even give you a better workout if you can pull it off. Oh, you may. Ooh, caffeine! <laughs> Sorry for going for my first Sorry to set. But... <laughs> oh, <really>? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. Come on. Yep, 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 pow! Now the reason I'm falling out of it is called rushing. With balance, you really need to be patient and take your time. Good. <clears throat> One thing if you have trouble balancing or the strength for something, sometimes it takes a set or two to actually warm up into it. Take note. Learn from other people's mistakes so you don't make it yourself. I said I would show you a few exercises that you can do if you're looking to start Iron Cross but don't know where to start. You can start by holding a support on the rings. If you can't hold a stable position above the rings, you're not going to have a chance of doing the cross. So aim to hold at least a 15-20 second support. Very important to turn the rings out. From there, you can start to bring the rings out by your sides, always with locked arms and just increase the amount of degrees as you go. It's very similar to the chest fly exercise. There's a lot of different ways to train the Iron Cross, but this is definitely the starting point for all the beginners out there. That support position is so essential, and then getting the feel for it by incrementally moving out is a great way to progress. So what I'm doing today is the Iron Cross, but I'm not actually gonna hit the full Iron Cross. Instead, I'm gonna go up and go to where I can, not taking a false grip, and holding it for five seconds. This is just gonna ensure I'm training straight arms for the exercise. Here we go. Yep. Zero. One, two, three, four, four. That was good form, man. Well done. Another warm up exercise you can do before you actually go into the cross to warm up the tendons hop up on the rings and do little presses. That's going to warm up the tendons and give your chest a nice little pump that's going to prepare it for the cross and the demands of the exercise. You've been very thorough. There's not much you can add on to that. But yes, we don't know one that can iron cross that's not a street dog. So doing felgers, I've already done my first set and I'm really noticing that shoulder stand negative exercise I did from last time is coming into this. As soon as I get around, I feel strength in that position now to actually pull up to support. So I'm really enjoying that. One thing I am feeling though is soreness in the forearms, which I've I've had from Pelican stage one in the past, and I've also had from doing circles on the pummel and the mushroom. Yep, good. Come on. 
too low. Shoot up a little bit higher. Yep, nice. Solid. One more, come on man. Come on. Make up for that. Come on, here we go. Good. Yes, yes, come on. Awesome. Oh. So I'm in a lot of pain in those sets, but it just feels worth it when you can pull back and get the set. So I'm going to talk about the ring structure. I got a lot of questions about this beauty of a beast, and basically I'll just run you through what it is. We've got the main frame here, which is a four to five metre pole that's been cemented one metre into the ground. Look at that ground. Thank you. That extends up there, and then up the top, we've got a bracket and three bolts on one side, and then three bolts on the other side, and they lock that pole up there at the top. Now they're adjustable, so I can loosen those and bring it down, because you'll see we've got increments drilled into this main frame, so we can choose to lower the bar and use it like a high bar, lower the bar so that the rings don't have as much length to them. It's a bit arduous to adjust it, so I'm happy with them up there because the pole's actually a bit too thick to use as a high bar anyway. We've got these, these black frames. Attaches about halfway up the pole. They go into this, this steel frame here, and then there's an alternate green frame there's an alternate frame here, which locks them both together, so you can see it's very stable. Furthermore to that, we've got on each side a rope, a very sturdy rope. The rope's falling apart at the moment. And follow it all the way down. Comes all the way down and ties onto the pergola here. The supports here and the rope is essential. When we first made the structure, just with the main frame, way too wobbly. It needs those stabilizing features so it makes it more practical. It cost about $1,000. Um, I wasn't trying to do it for budget. Obviously, I didn't want to do it expensive, but me and my dad did it together as a project. A labor of love, if you will. And I think a regular rings tower costs about six thousand dollars. Five thousand. About five grand. This is one fifth of that price, and it does the job. Awesome. I couldn't be happier with it. For all you people asking about it, that's how it was made. Simple equipment. These were spare parts that were just lying around. The rope you can buy from a hardware store. Metal frames, we got them cut for us at, they're hollow inside by the way. We got them cut at a metal fabricator. <laughs> Good. Come on man. Slow oh my god, that's a good effort man. I actually started very well on the right arm today. More difficult on the left arm. I lost an eight arms to the last set. You'll notice I used a thicker towel today. 
and I'm actually grabbing lower down. I just want to gauge where I'm at with that compared to the thin rag higher up. You can check out my video from day two when I talked about using a rag or a towel to help your one arm chin up. Just here, I'm going to my exam. Kind of had to cut the workout short. Although I showed you those ways to cut the exercises down, I missed out on front lever. The workout was good today. I had a low point and a high point. So it was best not to dwell on the, on the low points. The high point was actually how those shoulder negatives translated over into the felgas that I was doing today. They felt really strong in that position where you catch it and bring yourself into the support position. So I was really happy with that. I've been doing a lot of different exercises for the goal. But what that's done is really helped me gauge where my strength levels are at. It's really helped because of those months that I had off when you first start something or are first getting back into it. To really just try a range of different exercises just to see where you're at, it's really going to help you to actually plan a progressive workout for the future. So that's day seven done. Wish me luck for the exam. We'll see you on day eight. You can do body weight just about anywhere. So this week's recovery method is foam rolling. I feel it really loosens up the muscles, prepares you for exercise, but it also is a really good recovery method for afterwards, just before you go to bed. I'm gonna show you the methods I use to roll my muscles. I focused on the chest, the shoulders, the biceps, the triceps, and the upper back. Now, the first part that I hit was the chest. It was quite hard to hit the muscle when you're so close to the ground and still be able to put pressure on it. So I just took a stance on my knees, widened my knees, felt a bit awkward, but you get down low on your chest and then roll from there. It gave me this euphoric feeling when I was rolling on my chest here, either side. The next part that I rolled was the arms. I found a method which just basically for your biceps involved the same position as the chest really and just putting the foam roller to the side and rolling your bicep that way. I did it five times on the center of the bicep, then I would slightly rotate my arm to the left and then to the right and foam roll five times either side of that as well. For the tricep, it was a bit of a different position. It involved laying on your side and positioning your arm over the foam roller. Same thing as the bicep, I would rotate slightly to the left, slightly to the right to hit the tricep from all angles. The tricep felt almost as good as the chest. I would roll on my forearms as well, particularly the tendon area around the elbow. From there I would move on to the upper back. Initially I would start with a relaxed back, so I would have my arms up over my, by my ears. I would then go into kind of like a crunch position and that would actually get my rhomboids a lot more, stretch out my back and really get those muscles that aren't accentuated when you have a relaxed back. So for the shoulders, I would actually use a tennis ball. I found it quite difficult to hit it with the foam roller. You can use a tennis ball, or if you can take it, you can use a cricket ball, because that's harder. And you just position the tennis ball on the ground, position your shoulder over it, and just roll around. You kind of go in circles, feel the muscles. You can actually feel when the ball digs into your shoulder, the different muscles and parts. Try and roll it evenly around. Foam rolling in general, is painful. I know people that don't actually like to do it because it hurts, but the point is for it to hurt, it's like your own a self massage. The best time to do it is right before bed when you're not going to be doing any more physical activity for the rest of the day. I thought it was really good that I found out that I can have orgasms in my chest and triceps. I'll definitely carry this over into my training from now on. I used to only do lower body for Olympic lifting, but now I'm going to start doing upper body as well. So overall, I really like foam rolling. I'll be continuing to do it throughout my training and it's definitely recommended.